From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Sergeant Reynosa, Johnny. Oh, I was just going to call you. Has he talked yet? Pete Steimer is dead. When? A few minutes ago. He almost regained consciousness for a few seconds, and that was all. There's no chance to question him. It's too bad. Yeah, he might have been able to clear it up for us. I think maybe it is cleared up, Johnny, or will be at least in the next hour. What do you mean? We picked up Marty Midnight. When? Where? A few minutes ago at the bus depot with a ticket for San Diego in her hand. I haven't talked to her yet. They're holding her downtown headquarters. Why don't you meet me there? Fine, right away. Looks like the wind-up, Johnny. I hope so. I really hope so. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Los Angeles, to the home office, Trinity Mutual Insurance Company Limited, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Kalen Matter. Expense account, final page. Item 12, $1.60. Taxi from Queen of the Angels Hospital to police headquarters and interrogation room 9. The police clerk showed me to the observation anteroom and left. I paused for a moment and looked in through the one-way mirror window. Sergeant Reynosa was already there, and the girl, Marty Midnight, sat facing him across a plain wooden table. He was glancing through the arrest file and apparently hadn't started to question her yet. She was younger than I'd expected, not over 22 or 23, and she was obviously scared. But her face was set and ruddy, sullen, defiant. I tapped on the door, and the jail matron let me in. Oh, come on in, Johnny. Uh, take that chair, if you will. Thanks. When do I get to see a lawyer? You go under the name Marty Midnight? That's right. I said What's when... your real name? How long have you been in Los Angeles? Where'd you live before that? Uh, you see we got hold of here, Johnny? Yeah, I see. One of those wise ones, or so she thinks. If you're ever arrested, keep your mouth shut. Somebody told her that back along the line. She thinks it's good advice. I want a lawyer. Don't talk. They can't pin anything on you. She believes it. She'll probably still believe it right at the door of the gas chamber. I haven't done anything. You've got to let me see a lawyer. It's a law. You'll see one at the usual time. I know that law, too, Marty. And you're not being deprived of any of your legal rights. What's your real name? Well, then I guess we'll have to contact your folks and see if they have any influence. Contact my folks? Who are they? Go on, tell me. Well, let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. John R. Jack Lyon of San Diego at 426... How did you find out? And your name is or was Jean Luann Jackline. Don't let my folks know, please. I I'll talk, Sergeant. I'll answer anything you want to know. If you just won't use my real name. If you won't let my folks find out, please. Suddenly, she was just a frightened kid. Not a hard-boiled little chorus pony, a nightclub stripper. But only a scared girl who didn't want her folks to find out. She kept her head down and she answered Reynosa's questions. Her eyes lowered like a repentant school kid who had been caught playing hooky. And I remembered. The charge here was murder. Did you know that Eddie Kalin was married when you started going around with him? Not at first. And later you found out, but you kept on going with him. Well, he said he was getting a divorce. He said he'd been trying to get free of his wife for six months, but she wouldn't let him. Did you believe that? Well, yes. I don't know. I, I didn't until he came here that night. He said we're going to run away to Mexico together. The night he killed Mike Kelso? Yes, but I told you I didn't know about that until two days later. And it was self-defense, honest. Mike was trying to hold him up to get back the money Eddie won in that poker game. It was self-defense. Then why did Eddie go into hiding? Well, I told you that, too. It was his chance to get away from Lila and... Where were you going when the police arrested you over there in the bus station? San Diego. To my folks. Nobody here ever knew me by any name except Marty Midnight. I, I didn't think you could trace me. And you didn't want to be traced? Well, of course not. I came back and saw the police car at my apartment, and then I knew you'd found Eddie. I didn't want to be mixed up in it. Why'd you kill him? Marty? K kill who? Eddie. 
It wasn't Eddie. It was Mike Kelso. Eddie's the one who killed him in a fight. I told you that. It was... Oh, but you know it wasn't Eddie. You picked him up at my apartment, didn't you? Yeah, sure. We picked him up. In a basket. What? He's across the street from the morgue. Why'd you kill him, Marty? I didn't kill anybody. I didn't know Eddie was dead. I was coming home and I saw the police car. I thought you'd found him, that's all. I didn't know he was dead. I didn't kill him. You gotta believe me. I didn't know anything about it. Honest. Honest. Marty Midnight. Sharp, hard, tough. A striptease dancer who'd been around. Knew all about it. Marty Midnight. A scared, sobbing little child. Honest. Cross my heart and hope to die. Well, maybe she would. I left a few minutes later, and Sergeant Reynoso walked out with me to get a breath of air. It was a cold, gloomy night with a gray dawn just ahead. Three people were dead. And in the great stone building we walked out of, the machinery was grinding away, getting ready to take the life of a fourth one. Well, I guess I'd better get back inside, Johnny. You all right, Sergeant? The lab boy's making a paraffin test. You know, it's too bad. She's just a kid. Yeah. I was hoping it'd be Topo Leanley. That I'd love. He's long overdue. Well, he's still on the loose. Uh, it's a kid up there. You know it and I know it. And anything else is just wishful thinking. That witness saw her leave, saw her wipe off the gun, throw it back into the apartment. Yeah, I know. Well. Where'll you be, Johnny? The hotel? Oh, not for a while. I'm going to stop by Lila Kalins. At this time of night? Oh, she'll be waiting up. I promised her I'd see her and tell her what happened. She's, uh, taken quite a beating out of this mess. Why do they do it, Johnny? Why do dames fall for a guy like Eddie Kalin? Philosophy? At this time of morning? <laughs> I'll see you later. Expense account, item 13, $2.80. Taxi fare to the Argus Terrace Apartments to talk to the widow and beneficiary, Lila Kalin. Oh... Johnny, come on in. Thanks, Lila. I've been sitting in here in front of the fireplace all night long. I'd almost given you up. Well, a lot of things happen. Oh, man, I'm really beat. Coffee or a drink? Coffee, I guess. Black. Is it, is it all over now, Johnny? Well, it amounts to that. They've apparently got the killer. Who? That girl he was hiding out with, Marty Midnight. She's a striptease dancer. What? Why did she do it? The money, I suppose. They haven't found it yet, but they will. Here's your coffee. Oh, thanks. I feel sorry for her. Maybe because I feel sorry for myself or anybody who ever got mixed up with Eddie. Why do we do it, Johnny? Why do we go blind when a guy like that comes along? I don't know. You tell me. I wish I knew. Maybe a girl I met yesterday evening had it tagged. She said she knew Eddie was always lying. But he made it sound so exciting. He did. I had four years of it. Never knowing when he'd walk out and not come back. Never knowing who he was with. Knowing only one thing for sure. That he was lying to me every hour of the day. And now that it's over, I wonder why I went through with it. But he did make it sound exciting. Well, the best thing you can do, Lila, as soon as it's cleared up. Who can that be? This time oh, it might be Sergeant Reynosa. I told him I'd be here. Hello? Oh, yes, just a moment. You were right. Thanks. Yeah. Hold on to your hat, Johnny. It's wide open again. What do you mean? That paraffin test, negative. What? Marty Midnight hasn't fired a gun in the last two days. She was telling the truth, witness or no witness. So it looks like Topo Leanley's a boy. Sergeant, one. wait. Huh? What was Marty wearing when they picked her up at the bus depot? Why, uh, well, the same thing she was when you saw her, skirt and sweater. Did she have a coat on? A short jacket. What are you getting at? Hmm. Hey, Johnny, you still there? Uh, sorry, I was thinking, and it figures. Sergeant, can you come out here right away? To Lila's place? Why? It's important. Believe me. All right, Johnny, right away. Was it, Johnny? Lila with the coal black hair. It's beautiful. Well, thank you, Johnny. Pepita has black hair, too. 
At Marty Midnight's. Eddie only liked dark-haired girls. But Marty didn't have a white raincoat. I'll bet you do, though. What? Where is it? Here in the closet? Johnny. Uh-huh. What's this all about? A witness saw a girl leave Marty's apartment right after the shots. But it was dark, and all the witness could make out was the black hair and the white raincoats. What do you mean? The witness saw the girl wipe off a gun on the front of her coat, then throw it back into the apartment and run. There are smudges on your raincoat, Lila. It's grease off the door of the car. Supposedly, you haven't been out of this place since I talked to you yesterday evening. But it hadn't started to rain then, and the coat's damp. Why did you kill him, Lila? You're out of your mind, Johnny. It's no use, honey. Reynos is on his way out here. They'll make a paraffin test and prove you fired a gun. They'll probably dig up the taxi driver who took you out there. They'll search the place here, find the money. Was that it? The money? Was that why you killed him? No. I didn't mean to. When I went out there. Yesterday evening while I was talking to you, I suddenly wondered if it might not have been somebody else's body in that car. I knew about Marty Midnight, of course. I knew about all of them. After you'd gone, I went out there. Waited until I saw Pete Steimer leave, finally Marty. And I forced my way in. So? And Eddie was furious. We argued and fought. Eddie drew a gun on me. He threatened me. We struggled. So that's going to be a pitch, huh? A plea of self defense. That's it, Johnny. Self defense. <sighs> well, good luck. You'll need it. Expense account item 13, $263.35. Incidentals, etc. in Los Angeles and plane fare back to Hartford. Expense account total, $596.85. End of expense account. End of report. Remarks? So the question still stands. Why do they do it? Why do girls go blind when the Eddie Kalins walk in? You might ask a strip teaser down in San Diego. But don't look for her under the name of Marty Midnight. She's Jean Luann Jackline now. A quiet kid. Lives at home with her folks. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week, the case of a beautiful girl who refuses to see the man she loves as he really is. A killer. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Virginia Gregg, Lucille Meredith, Alma Lawton, Gloria Blondell, Howard McNear, Harry Bartell, Peter Leeds, and Byron Kane. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station. For another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>